Hello, David here, and welcome to a tutorial on the Yaskava Robots Connectivity Plugin in Visual Components. When following any tutorial, check the lesson in the Visual Components Academy, and if the Download Files option appears, you can download the example files. For this tutorial, we will enable the Visual Components Connectivity feature. And for the robot controller, we are using Yaskava MotoSim software, and we will install the MotoSim plugin. Information on where to download any additional software components will be included in the video description. To enable the connectivity feature, go to File, Options Add-on, and click to enable connectivity. Then click OK below and restart the application. In this tutorial, we first look at the simulation model, then we create the virtual controller, post-process the program from visual components to native robot language, and finally we create a connection from visual components to the robot controller. We are in the program tab, and let's first take a look at the simulation model. We click play to run the simulation, where we have an injection molding machine, and a Yaskava robot tending it. So when a product is molded, the robot picks it up and places it onto the conveyor, and the cycle continues. And then resetting the simulation with the robot selected, so we can see its subprograms in the panel on the left, the main program of the robot looks like this. Let's open the signal editor above and select the robot to check its signal connections. First of all, output number 1 is used as the grasp and release signal action. Output number 2 is connected to the molding machine. And there's a signal coming back from the machine to robot input at port 1. Let's close the signal editor by clicking the signals tool control once more. We are using the Yaskava GP8L, so now let's go to MotoSim and create a virtual controller for this robot arm. In MotoSim, let's first create a new project. We will name the project IMM for Injection Molding Machine and click Open. To create a new virtual controller, go to the Controller tab and click New and click OK. Let's use YRC1000 as the controller type and click OK. Then set the language and choose the robot type as GP8L. For the application, let's choose Handling, and then complete the dialog by clicking Standard Setting Execute. And now the virtual controller is being created. Let's click OK, and once the Teach Pendant is visible, the virtual controller is online. Before we continue, there's one limitation in MotoSim and its APIs, where if we create a new controller, it will not yet be exposed to the connectivity plugin. So what we need to do is save our project, and then exit MotoSim and launch the software again. So let's do that. Then let's open the IMM project we saved, and now the controller should be exposed for connectivity. The next thing is to post-process the program from visual components. Yaskava robot programs use joint pulse values for the robot positions. And for that, we first need to set the pulse ratios for our visual components model. And to do that, we need one parameter file from the controller. To get that file, let's first open the keypad for the teach pendant, and on the main menu, Let's navigate to external memory and then save. Double click parameter and we need the robot match parameter file, so the rc.prm file. Double click that so that the star icon appears and on the keypad click enter and then click yes. Now the rc.prm file was saved to the robot storage card. Go to the Controller tab in MotoSim and click Storage Card to view the location where the file was saved. 
Now we will copy the file from this location to our work folder, which can be our downloads folder. So we paste the file there and keeping the storage card location open in the file explorer window, since we are going to access it again later, we will now return the visual components and use that file. To set the pulse ratios in the program tab, from the post process menu under Yaskava, select Yaskava pulse setter. Then on the right, click read pulse values from file. Select the rc.prm file from our downloads folder and click open. Now we need to select the control group. In this case, the default value is OK, so we just click select, and now the panel shows the pulse ratio values. We need to click set all values to component. And now those ratios are saved as component properties on the model. And now we can close this tool. And now if I save my layout, I no longer need to do this process again, but I can only post process the program. So now we need to post process the program. So selecting the post process menu again, under Yaskava, let's click download. We will select the downloads folder and name the file main.jbi and click save and click OK. And here we see that in the downloads folder, the post processor actually created a .jbi file for each subprogram's routine. So now we need to copy all these .jbi files to the storage card. So copy the files and paste them into the storage card folder. Let's now go to Motosim and load the job files. So clicking external memory and then load. Let's choose job and select all the files, which we can do by clicking edit and then select all. And on the keypad, click enter and then click yes. Now we can choose the main job from the main menu. So click job, then select job, and let's choose main. And this will be the entry point for our virtual controller. Next, what we need to do is create the connection from visual components to the VRC. And in Motosim, what we need to first do is go to the connectivity tab, click to open VC integration, and click start connection. And now we can hide this panel. Let's then go to visual components. And before we go to the connectivity tab, we need one helper component from the e catalog. So let's go to the Home tab, and in the e-catalog, browse models by manufacturer, Yaskova, and then miscellaneous, where we will find the Motosim joint converter. This helper component is required because in Motosim, the exposed joint values are not represented in the same way as the joint values in the controller. So this component converts the Motosim values back to the controller values. To use this component, we load it into the layout, then open the interfaces editor above, and click to select the robot to connect the abstract interface between these two components, and then close the interfaces editor. And now, when we pair the variables, we don't pair the robot components' joint values directly, but we pair the joint properties on the Motosim joint converter helper component. Then let's go to the Connectivity tab. And on Yaskava Robot on the left, right click and select Add Server. Then over on the right, let's test the connection. The connection succeeded, so we click OK and then apply in the lower right corner. We can now establish a connection by clicking the server Connect and Disconnect control for our Yaskava robot. And now let's pair the variables. So first, on the server to simulation variable group, right-click and select Add Variables. If in the Create Variable Pairs panel, you don't see the tree appearing on the left side, you can right-click and select Reload Simulation Structure. And first, let's pair the joint variables. 
So on the simulation tree, open Moto Sim joint converter and its component properties. So we can see the joint values there. Then on the server tree on the right, open the root node and then movement. And to select all six joints, holding shift, select the first and last joint and do the same for the tree on the left. And then click pair selected. And we can see the paired variables being added below. Next, we need to pair the outputs that we use in the program. So then closing MotoSim join converter in the tree on the left, open the GP8L component and making sure that you have signal maps enabled above, open the outputs tree. Then on the server side, close movement and open the YRC1000, then open IO and external output. In the program, the controller uses general purpose outputs starting from index 1, but on the server tree, only the external outputs are exposed. By default, there's a cross connection from general purpose output at index 1 to the external output at index 30,030. So then let's pair the output at index 1 to this index in the external output array and click pair selected. And let's do the same for the output at index 2. And the correct index on the external output is 30,031 and click pair selected. And now that we have the two outputs paired, we can pair the inputs. So then selecting the simulation to server variable group on the left and closing the outputs, open the inputs. And do the same on the right, close the external outputs and open the external inputs. Similar to the outputs, the input at index 1 by default is cross connected to the external input at index 20,030. So let's pair this one input we use in the program to this external input and click pair selected. And now that we have the variables paired, we can close the create variable pairs panel. And before we test the connection, selecting the robot in the executor tab of its component properties on the right, let's disable the is enabled property so that the simulation will not use the visual components program anymore. Now we can test the connection. But before we do that, let's first reorganize our screen space a little. Using the push pin control, we can hide the component properties and connectivity configuration panels. And to place the application side by side, holding the Windows key, use the left arrow key to place visual components on the left side of the screen and select Modo Sim to place it on the right. To start the main program on the virtual controller, you can, for example, select the play mode. And on job, let's select cycle. And to repeat the main routine, set the work select to auto mode. And on the keypad, click enter. And now returning to job, click job and click start above. The virtual controller is now running. And in visual components, we can click play to run the simulation. The robot waits for an input signal from the machine and then it picks the product and places it on the conveyor. And the cycle is repeated. We can click show variables above to open the connected variables panel below. And dragging the panel up, we can see the paired variables and debug them and our system. So now the connection works and everything seems to be working as expected. Excellent. And this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.